Hey YouTube, it's uh, Jeff here again. I uh, just wanted to do another quick video. This one's on a 22 pistol that I picked up. This is the Ruger SR22. Uh, it's a 22 caliber uh, small pistol for light duty use, a lot of range time. You know, if you're just trying to work on technique or you have new shooters in your family and you're looking for a smaller pistol, this is a perfect little gun. Um, I did have at one point in my life, I had one of the uh, 22, 45 Mark threes or Mark fours. I can't remember the exact model. And <clears throat> I like that gun. It had a heavy bull barrel on it, but the downside to it was it was impossible to take apart. So I got rid of that gun and uh, went without a 22 for quite a long time. And recently I was just kind of surfing the web and happened across this one. So I picked this up for a steal. I uh, couldn't let it go, so I you know, had to take it home with me. And I've been very pleased with it. So I'm gonna go over the specifications of the gun first, and then I'll give you my opinions on it. Um, and I'll just kind of talk about it a little bit. I, I have shot it, um, and I'll roll in some footage of the shooting uh, throughout the video, but uh, at any rate, let's get started. So this is a double action, single action pistol. So it does have the magazine safety disconnect. So with the magazine out, you're not doing anything with this pistol. So it does have the magazine safety disconnect. So with the magazine out, you're not doing anything with the pistol. Um, this is a double action, single action. So it has quite a, quite a long trigger pull on the first pull. But after that, it, the reset on it's fairly quick. Um, but it is a hammer-fired gun, so you can take it back and take up all that slack if you just wanted to uh, go with a single action shot. But, oh, and the other thing too here while I'm on this is it is a decocker. Now I'll get back to that in my impressions uh, of, the, of the pistol a little later. So moving along, it does have a Picatinny rail under the uh, under the slide here. Don't know if you're really going to want to run lights or lasers with this, but if you're, you know, shine, trying to show technique, maybe you'll run a laser underneath there. It's just not what I got this pistol for. So your mileage may vary. You run it however you want. I just don't see any real need for it. Um, so it, the sights on this guy, they are a three dot sight. So you can see Right there, they are three dot, and they are adjustable for windage and elevation. On the back here, they're a polymer sight, and this, the rear here feels like it's spring-loaded. So that's an interesting little uh, uh, feature there. Three dot sights, adjustable three dot sights on a small little pistol like this. It's a pretty good value. Um, so the barrel on this guy, and I'll just cover this real quick. So it is a fairly large barrel on there for a 22. They're calling that a bull barrel. I don't know if you would call that a bull barrel, but for a 22, that is a thicker bar barrel. In comparison to the, um, the uh, 2245 I had, that barrel is pretty small. So, you know, is it bull? I don't know. Uh, it is thicker than a very thin barrel, but I don't know if it's bull barrel. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, so they, they do come with two magazines. The, uh, both magazines come with this finger extension on it, so it does feel you know, pretty good in the hand. Um, one thing that, you know, I have a, a medium-sized hand. One thing that I did notice with this gun is how similar it is to the Walter. Um, and let me show you that real quick. So the design cues on the uh, SR22, um, I have a, a Walter CCP here, and you can see here the design similarities between the two pistols is very uncanny. Um, I understand Walter makes a 22 as well, but I had this one available just for a side, quick side-by-side -side comparison. You can see that there's a lot of similarities between the two pistols. It's hard to not notice that. Uh, I don't know where they, you know, how they came to that. Uh, if they're direct copies or if they're just mimicking or, you know, if they were in contracts or something, but it's definitely noticeable that these two pistols are very similar in, in outline, uh, if not in functionality. So anyway, so I'll go over the grips real quick. So 
the grip on this is replaceable. It does come with a smaller grip, so to remove the magazine. And then all you have to do is just friction these grips off. They just slide right off, and that's what it looks like without them. So there's not a lot holding them on uh, other than friction. And as you can see, it's easy to quickly replace those. So if you wanted to swap them out real quick, hand them off to a, a child with a, a smaller hand, and then put them back on for some, you know, somebody with a larger hand, maybe a woman or you know, somebody else who's gonna be shooting it, maybe you, and you want the bigger grip, uh, it's easy to swap it out. It takes no time at all. Uh, field strip on this thing is also very, very simple. So I'll try to do that on camera real quick. It's not easy to do on camera but you have this little tab right here. You just pop that down and then you pull it back and lift it off and that's it. So really simple to field strip. The uh, barrel stays with the, with the frame, it's pinned into the frame. And then reassembly is also very simple. You just slide the spring down in there. There's a little catch and then you line the spring and the guide rod up, you pull them back, drop it in place, and close it back off, and you are back together. So as you can see, nothing to it, easy peasy. Uh, so the, uh, just cover some of the other specifications on it real quick. It's a three and a half inch barrel, 17.5 ounces in weight, Overall length is 6.4 ounces, height is 4.9. Um, it does have finger serrations in the front and the back if you want to do press checks. It takes nothing to do press checks if you just wanted to peek in there real quick to make sure it's stripping off around. It's California approved if that matters to you and it has an MSRP of 439. Now you can get these for about 250 to 300 on the used market. Um, I got it for considerably less than that. And that's why I own this now, it's because it was so cheap. Um, so anyway, that's the, uh, that's the specifications of it real quick. I uh, just wanted to cover that before I moved on. So I took it to the range and I'll roll in some range video here. And as you can see from the range, I was shooting the Remington, uh, this golden yellow box uh, bulk pack, um, the hollow points. And I had, I think out of the entire day, I had maybe one jam or failure to fire. Um, I had some dud rounds more than I had anything else, you know, rounds that you'd, you'd uh, drop the hammer on it and the hammer would hit the primer, but the round wouldn't go off. Um, had a couple of those. Those were just, you know, dud rounds. I think I had one or two of those. I can't remember exactly right now. But again, this has been a very reliable gun. I think I shot maybe... 200 rounds. I got tired of loading the magazine. That's how many rounds I fired. Um, and it, it kept going. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't even phased. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking for a nice learning pistol, maybe you got snakes in your, in your neighborhood and you, you like to take walks or whatever, and you're looking for a nice little 22 to carry with you, this would be a great little gun. Um, you know, 22 isn't, isn't the most powerful self-defense round, but if you, you know, if that's all you have, uh, you know, maybe against a coyote or a rattlesnake or something along those lines, you know, 11 rounds, um, it, it would definitely make an animal rethink its priorities. It, I wouldn't take it up against anything bigger than a, a coyote or a dog. Um, but, you know, if you had to use it in a self-defense situation against a human, um, you know, it's 22s have killed a lot of people in their time. So, uh, you know, it's an underpowered round and for the same size, you could absolutely have a nine millimeter that, you know, definitely has the potency to take down a human. Um, 
but if you you know grip strength and that kind of thing uh 22 will will with enough rounds can get the job done just as well so um another thing i wanted to talk about so while you're you know you're shooting the gun and you're doing a thumbs forward grip right one thing that i noticed is you've got to have it up for fire so you know you're going thumbs forward and if you accidentally hit it down you're not going to have anything so it, it was easy enough to do um i wouldn't say i did it a lot but i had to become aware of it and so i would just pull my thumb down and then I wouldn't even worry about it because it was really easy to, you know, get your thumbs really high up there so you could get low on the bore axis. And it was just something I had to, you know, negotiate with the pistol as I was firing it. Uh, it's not the end of the world and it's easily overcome um, if, if you're aware of it. You know, just a, a quick walk around. Safeties, it's Ambi safeties. It's got the slide release on one side. Um, you know, serrations in the front, serrations on the grip. Nice big hump in the back here. It's very comfortable to hold. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's overall, man, it's a nice gun. I, uh, I like it. Um, it it's going to serve my family well into the future. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. And if you want to follow me on my other uh, social media accounts, you can find me on Instagram at Jeff underscore tack and on the vlogs as well as bitshoot.com. Uh, both of those are uh, alternative platforms to YouTube and with YouTube break, uh, cracking down on gun channels, um, I've taken the opportunity to uh, diversify where I put my content. I've been demonetized for a long time. Um, I haven't uh, made any money off of YouTube videos, so I'm not really too concerned about whether YouTube's getting advertising money or not. I'm just trying to get content out for people to consume. Um, I believe in the the Second Amendment, I believe in the First Amendment, and we need to be able to get our message out. So uh, if you're a content creator, keep doing what you're doing, you know, you have my respect. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, with the crackdowns on this type of content, uh, your voice is more important now than ever. So at any rate, have a great one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.